In this video, we continue discussing so-called carboxylic acid derivatives by looking at the nomenclature of so-called acyl halides. Remember, an acyl halide is a molecule that has a carbonyl group. That carbonyl group is directly bonded to an R group, which would be carbons or hydrogens over here. And then as well, it is bonded to a halogen atom, which we refer to as X, hence acyl halide, where X here is a halogen. And the carbonyl group plus the R group that's directly bonded to it over here that I'm highlighting my laser pointer is referred to as the acyl group. So by the end of this video, you should be able to look at a molecule that has an acyl halide functional group in combination with other functional groups such as halogens, ether groups, etc., and determine the IUPAC name for that acyl halide. For those of you that recall how to name carboxylic acids from our last unit, naming acyl halides will be very, very similar. And in fact, we're going to base our discussion of IUPAC nomenclature of these acyl halides based on what we learned previously about naming carboxylic acids. So the rules here are the same as for carboxylic acids. There's a whole video on naming carboxylic acids if you need a refresher on that. It occurred in the last uh, module or the last unit. So the same rules as for naming carboxylic acids, except that we need to designate the parent is the acyl halide chain rather than the carboxylic acid chain. And so rather than having the suffix ic acid at the end of the name for a carboxylic acid to specify that it's an acyl halide, we'll change the suffix from ic acid to yl chloride. So same nomenclature system, same rules as for naming carboxylic acids with the acyl halide being extremely high ranking and hence going to be higher ranking than any of the other functional groups that you will come across in the molecule. Um, so to name that parent chain that contains the acyl halide, change the ic acid portion of the carboxylic acid name, and I'm breathing carboxylic acid as CA, to YL halide to indicate specifically which halogen is present there. So chloride, fluoride, bromide, iodide, and so on. So let's do an example of this to make sure that we're on track here with determining the IUPAC names of these acyl halides. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out an acyl halide here. Drawing out my acyl halide molecule like so. What we will do is as our starting point here, as always, we find the longest carbon chain and we keep in mind here that our longest carbon chain has to contain the acyl halide because that is our anchor because it is the highest priority group of all the groups that are here in determining the longest carbon chain. The acyl halide is more important in determining the longest carbon chain than this ether group over here or any other group that you will come across within your molecule. And so therefore, if you see an acyl halide, what that indicates is that your longest carbon chain has to start there at that acyl halide carbonyl carbon, the one I've highlighted in green. We find the longest carbon chain from there, so we come to here, and we say, okay, what's our longest carbon chain coming from this direction? So our longest continuous carbon chain, we could go up to here, and that would give us two more carbon atoms, one, two, or we could come down to here, and that would give us three more carbons, one, two, three. This is the direction we want to go because that's the longer carbon chain. So we'll go ahead and follow that longer carbon chain down here, here, and here to give us our parent chain and hence our parent name. Number that starting at the carbonyl because the carbonyl is the highest um, priority group here in terms of nomenclature. So we have a five carbon chain. That five carbon chain has our, our acyl halide at the end of it here at carbon number one with our chlorine and our carbonyl included in that. And so our parent name for this molecule, based on our longest carbon chain that we have there, is going to be, keeping in mind our YL halide suffix, pent han O Y L 
chloride, and we leave a space there between pentanoyl and chloride. Keep in mind, if this was a 5-carbon carboxylic acid, we would call it pentanoic acid. So we changed oic acid to OYL chloride, keeping in mind that changing the ic acid part of the carboxylic acid to YL halide. So in this case, YL chloride is the distinguishing feature of this name that separates it from the nomenclature of a carboxylic acid. So pentanoyl chloride encompasses everything that we've highlighted in green. And now we get to maybe the deeper end of the pool here in nomenclature because we need to name this branch that comes off of that chain. There is only one branch coming off of this whole chain. It's right here at carbon number two that I've highlighted in red there at carbon number two. We need to name this entire branch. And this is a branch within a branch, which are always fun or not fun to name, depending on how you look at it. Let's look at it as being a fun thing to do. So at position two, we have this entire group. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name this group by itself. So in other words, if we consider this just to be its own entity, its own branch, we find the longest carbon chain of that branch by starting with the carbon that is bonded to our parent chain. This is our parent chain right here in green. So our first carbon off that parent chain is this one right here. This is carbon number one. We refer to that as carbon number one of this branch and not the carbon over here because we already counted the carbon over here that I'm circling. We already counted that as part of the parent chain, so don't double count it. But we count this as carbon number one because it comes off of that parent chain. So this is number one. Our longest carbon chain has to be a continuous carbon chain, so the only way to go with that is to come over here to carbon number two. And so a two carbon chain would be referred to as an ethyl group. So part of this branch is going to be referred to as an ethyl group but that doesn't capture everything because an ethyl group would just be this two carbon chain with nothing else. Keep in mind though, at carbon one of this two carbon chain, there is this methoxy group. Remember our methoxy group from our ether nomenclature. So we would refer to that as a methoxy ethyl group. So methoxy refers to the fact that at that oxygen atom of the ether, there is a methyl group directly branching off of that. Ethyl refers to the fact that there's a two carbon chain and the methoxy group is coming off of that. And we should indicate here as well that it's a 1-methoxy ethyl branch because the methoxy group is coming off at position 1 of the chain. It could instead have been coming off at position 2 over here instead. So it's a 1-methoxy ethyl group. And so that is going to specify everything that we have circled. What we haven't informed the reader of is where that 1-methoxy group is located along the parent chain. So I put that whole group, 1-methoxyethyl, into parentheses, and then in front of that specify which carbon of this longest carbon chain is that 1-methoxy group coming off of. It's coming off at position number 2, and so therefore we refer to it as a 2-1-methoxyethyl two, two group. And so we plug that all in at the front part of the name here, so it's 2 and then 1-methoxy, so 1-methoxy ethyl, end parenthesis, and then we would go right into the word, I didn't have time to space to put this all in one line, but we go right into the word pentanoyl chloride. So the 1-methoxy ethyl group is all at position 2. That's what this is telling us that at position two, you have this entire group, the one methoxy ethyl group, and that is all coming off of the pentanoyl chloride as the parent chain here. In determining the full IUPAC name for this, we have one additional consideration to keep in mind, and that is this particular molecule has two stereocenters, one here at carbon number two of the main chain, that's where I'm highlighting, and the other over here within our branch where I'm highlighting now at carbon number one of the branch. Of these two stereocenters, we can only assign the configuration of the one that's part of the parent chain, the one I'm circling here, because that's the only one where we're given wedges or dashes. And so therefore, this particular stereocenter that I'm highlighting with my laser pointer right now, that one is going to be left unassigned because we don't have wedges or dashes to allow us to determine that. That would mean that perhaps when the experimenter was determining the structure of this molecule, they could not determine accurately whether this was an R or an S configuration. They left it undefined. So on the other hand, though, this one at carbon number two in green, 
carbon number two of the main chain, we can assign as R or S, and so we should go ahead and assign it as R or S. Coming up with the RS assignment, the highest ranking group is going to be this carbon coming over to the carbonyl. Second highest rank group is coming over here to toward our ether group. Third highest rank group is coming here down the carbon chain. So going from one to two to three with our hydrogen pointed away from us is going to mean that this is S. And we do need to specify that this is 2S because of the fact that we have multiple stereo centers within this molecule. We have to indicate number two to tell the reader which stereo center we are referring to here. So that is the rundown of how we go about naming the acyl halides